Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I am here um, putting another layer on this painting, and uh, I've got this nearby, but I'm willing to also put it away if need be. So looking up close, you can see it's actually a sky with power lines there and lots of patterns on the dress, clouds. I'm gonna set that off to the side. As promised, a little late, I'm gonna show you this, um, the glaze. So sometimes it's nice to just use an overall color when everything's dry to make a glaze. And for, for our purposes, I'm still using the cold wax medium. Remember, it dries clear, it's very stiff, and it's an alternative to your Galkid. So you can just imagine that this is the same as the Galkid. There's my solvent. A little bit of medium and a little bit of solvent to make a bit of a wetter slurry here. And I've got some sepia. Sepia is similar to your raw umber. It's just a slightly different pigment, something I like to use. And sometimes it's fun for me <clears throat> to just glaze something over everything. You wanna take it down a notch and then you can always wipe off areas. So I'm going directly into my glaze now and I am putting this everywhere. So the idea of this is that it's not pure sepia out of the tube. Instead, this is the sepia very heavily mixed with medium and a little bit of solvent just so that my medium mixture more closely mimics your Galkid. So the medium is an extender. It makes the paint more transparent. You may ask, why are you making that yellow dirty? I, I liked the yellow. Well, I like the yellow too. I just wanna see everything pushed back sort of in a neutral, soft way with this nice glazy brown and then I can start to carve saturated colors back out. And I might wipe off big areas of this and I might not. <clears throat> this can also be done with black. It can be done with blue, but you have to be real careful when you start getting into things like ultramarine or viridian. Those can be pretty strong colors. If you wanna glaze with one of those colors, you might wanna add a little brown to it. So your dark colors are great for glazes and that's what a glaze is. A glaze is a dark color over a lighter ground. Okay, so this is an overall glaze. It looks kind of dirty and grungy. So right off the bat, I think what I might do is get my rag and just wipe away areas I know I'm gonna wanna paint bright again. I like this yellow too much to get too heavy with it. So I'm just gonna wipe a little of it back. Not much, just a little. So this can get can bring a darker tone. Now, if you want to glaze with something more vivid, you certainly can. Um, one of the colors, ultramarine blue, for example, I mentioned. Another might be one of your violety reds. We have this quinacridone magenta that we used before. I also have this quinacridone violet. I actually think that might be nice to add into the um, the clouds below. So I think I'm going to rinse this brush off. <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna glaze with a little bit of that quinacridone violet here. Get it nice and transparent. So mixing the glaze medium with it, making it a little clearer, and just maybe deepening some of the violets down here. Now I'm doing that on top of my brown glaze, so it's a little bit grungy. But as you know, I'm a bit of a fan of related color dirty mixed color, which can then be cleaned up later. So, ooh, so then you might start to make some creative choices. You might see some possibilities. So now that I've covered the painting with glaze, I love that because it also frees me up to feel a little more free, a little less um, stymied, a little less worried, just Everything's covered with paint, the whole surface right there. I didn't treat it like a coloring book. I, I made a skin of paint over the whole thing. Whoops, my, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> but my mind goes right to, okay, I want to start to really pull out some of these stronger areas and kind of re reassert them. So I'm gonna start with her form. 
let's look, start with our subject. I really like that pale pink to blue range. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in there. Looks like the white paint on my palette was a little dried out. Should have cleaned it all completely. Adding a little white, making some nice pink with the um, quinacridone magenta there. And I'm just gonna go for it. So here, here in this second layer, I can start to really get more intense. Ooh, that's a little dark. Let's get it even lighter. I loved that kind of cloudy pink up there. There was like a sky type thing. I thought that was really interesting. I don't even know whether I'm gonna put a face there. I kind of feel like probably not. And then it kind of faded into a, a blue down in her middle area and torso. So just taking my dirty pink brush and making this nice blue, which mixing with the pink makes it a little bit purple, which I think it was a sort of purpley pale blue. Adding a little more white. Just get more of that vibrating feeling of the violet there. So you, this is really not that dissimilar to some of the things that I saw that we talked about in class on Monday, where you were going in and you were sharpening things and you were clarifying things. So we're sort of in the same universe there. I like this sort of pink that's happening in my brush there, so I'm just gonna go for it. Also like some of the pieces of the leftover colors. I don't see why leaving them is necessarily a bad thing. And I'm gonna start to interrupt makes sense to me to interrupt the original plan. So bring this color down a little. It's just a feeling I have. What if that was sort of like her hand? I don't even know if I could fake it, but I could try. <clears throat> My goal in this little mini demo is to give you guys some ideas as you do any final touches to your piece tonight or later um, so that you can think about possible variations on your theme. It's good to, to do a lot of sessions, but not always to um, make some hard decision about when to start and stop. Maybe you just need to paint for a little while and then stop. Really love that ground behind her. And I'm not really sure exactly what I'm doing with it, but I do know that I wanna make it more solid. So maybe by mixing some white there and starting to mimic the feeling of what might be dirt. And just starting to see what happens the most important thing for me anyway. I like to see what's going on. I feel like there was this lovely movement in her skirt. So before I get much farther with sort of reestablishing some of these colors further, I think I'm gonna reestablish that skirt. So another thing you might notice at this point that you may remember from before is the way I jump from thing to thing. I think that it's sort of like life when you try to exercise regularly or you try to you try to uh this is me using my back of my brush to grab a little more medium you try to do healthy things but then you just can't do it all the time so you have to do fun things so in a painting if you focus only on one part and you don't have some balance it's sort of like that it's like you wouldn't raise a child feeding them broccoli for every meal and you wouldn't raise them eating them cake for every meal or else they'd get sick. Your painting's gonna get sick. Boy, that's quite an analogy, right? Go right through this pink cloud. Your painting's gonna get sick if you stick with one spot so much and neglect the rest, you could get in trouble. So why don't you just not get in trouble and instead paint an area and then 
it doesn't have to be perfect yet. Just stop and paint another area. And while you're painting, stop and look at the way that things are relating. You guys who are watching this are probably noticing some stuff that I'm not even noticing because I'm talking and I'm painting and I'm so fixated on whatever little area I'm working on that I might be losing sight of the bigger picture myself. So this is about the interruption of edges, the overlapping. Doesn't mean I'm covering it, it just means that for the moment, I'm overlapping it. I just made her a little longer. Now is the time when I listen to weird voices in my head that say, do this thing, do that thing. I just had a voice in my head, more or less tell me to lighten up the pink underneath her. So, ooh, I think I'm gonna get this, oh no, I'm gonna get the cad red out. Let's make, let's make it glow a little. So some cad red over here and maybe some more white in my white pile there. Let's make a hot pinkish red. Let's get it brighter, so like that. It's just this sort of impulse I had to like pop it over here, like pop some bright, pop some bright pink. Oof, see how I quickly abandoned that skirt? I just wanted to like get it going a little. It's a perfect brush to kind of make these sort of cloudy vibes, isn't it? Kind of a dried out weird brush, but it's sort of working for me. Remember those clouds? There were some cloud things going on. I'd like to talk a little less so that you can watch while I work. By the way, <clears throat> don't ever assume that I know what I'm doing at any given moment. I may have a lot of practice, but one of the things I practice at is not necessarily knowing what I'm doing. That's the one way for me and for many, many artists, we cultivate a sense of wonder and experimentation by being fully willing to fail at what we're doing and make big, ugly, bad mistakes. If you look at a x-ray or a, um, there's more sophisticated technologies in x-rays for looking at old paintings, but if you look at paintings by great, revered, dead artists, you often discover that <clears throat> underneath that um, infrared, I think it's called infrared refractography or reflectography or something, there's some really cool techniques. You'll find that they have reworked areas. Look at those hot pinks and reds. They might rework some areas a lot. And we're talking about, you know, the big ones, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones, like the, the Leonardo and the Raphael and all those artists. If they felt like their work could be adjusted, then surely you and I can interrupt our edges and not be so stuck on having such a rigid plan. We have to be learning and we have to be humble to that process. <clears throat> so here I'm, I'm also trying to demonstrate some possible fun thickness. So like mixing a little more paint. Don't be afraid to waste paint, so to speak. Use extra paint. I like the um, the idea of of thick paint. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I, I don't want to be afraid of it. I also talked a little big game about mixing up your colors, didn't I? So let me see if I can get with some of that. I'm actually going to steal some of this hot pink from this brush right here on my dirty green brush. And I might just throw a little bit of that subtle hint of that pink in here. I mean, it's not so much to read as pink, but just to bring some of that pink in. That may or may not work out for us, but I feel compelled now, of course, to go back to the blue. I'm gonna use this paper right here to wipe this off. Maybe just clean this brush a little. 
So back to our blue violet. Ooh, that's lovely. That might be a little closer to the blue that was down by the pink clouds in the original collage. So hearkening back to the original collage, we had some of this, <clears throat> some of this going on, those blue bits. So this particular blue may not be perfect for that, but I don't know if I have a any kind of a cerulean or manganese blue like right there in front of me. So I'm just going to stick with this for now and um, see if I can Yeah, I might have even ruined it or it might be great. Might have to come in in front of it with the pink again, if you know what I mean. I don't know. Just don't know. And that's okay. Maybe if I add some green to this blue, I can mess with it a little bit right here. Yeah. I'm also feeling like I want to do some dangerous stuff here. I don't really know what that would be. Um, maybe some like load my brush up with two different colors and make it all stripey. <laughs> you know, we're talking like weirdness. Is that her hand? I don't know. <clears throat> So, I don't want everything to be the same. I like the brushiness of this. One of the things I sometimes do if I really want to interrupt myself a little is I might, I might try a drip. Dangerous, I know. But it's not like you guys haven't worked with some drips, right? I mean, didn't you? Didn't you do a bunch of drips when you were doing your abstract painting, right? Well, that drip isn't very satisfying, is it? But what if? What about a spray? This is probably where gloves would be good, but I'll wash my hands really quickly after this. Okay, that's more exciting. I love that. Remember, I can wipe it off if I want. Like I'm gonna wipe this drip off. Oof lose the skirt too. Whoops. So if I'm asking you to be fearless, then I too need to like kind of do that, right? I need to be fearless too. I'm interested in gestural abstraction, but I like representation so I try to play around with both and I also try to to play with um with brushes you know what color I haven't dug into today is the yellow let's do some of that so I just added a little more of that neon cad yellow and let's try a different brush maybe maybe not I don't know I don't know what I'm doing with this one, but I have this instinct to use it real thick, straight out the tube almost, almost no medium. And just nice and, ooh, buttery, like butter. This is bugging me. I don't know. It's just bugging me. Any of you guys look at Kim Dorland, the artist I told you to look at? If you did, you know how weird that stuff can be. Those figures glowing in the woods. Those neon outlines. Makes me kind of want to do some neon in here. But for right now, once this gets real wet, there's not a lot I can do, right? But it could be that I, whoops, mess it up. That's because I got some blue on my yellow. Not too tragically upset, though. If I wanted it to be clean, I'd be working on a computer with graphic design. 
all the great designers who make stuff look like paintings, it's because they learned how to make paintings first. They took that brave step into this sloppy world of paint. They know, they know. Got to do a lot of that. That kind of green blotch back there is kind of lovely. I'm going to leave it for now. Also like that there's pink splatters that just don't exist in this yellow sky now. Ooh, I really want to feel a sunset here. I'm just going to go for it. Why not? Me and sunsets are friends. That sounds pretty silly, but whatever. So because this is nice and wet, I can sort of mix this sort of red into this yellow and maybe kind of like suggest some kind of a a weather situation, but not doesn't have to be literal. Um, I really love what's going on here and I'm kind of afraid to ruin it. I also want to keep this demo somewhat short. I just realized that was down there. So I'm going to maybe play with some contrast in a couple spots and then leave this for the time being just because I think it would be helpful to just sort of compare this to the last iteration of it um, but not necessarily to go a million miles got to get you got to got to get this on the YouTubes for you guys um, perhaps Ooh, big glob of dried paint. Perhaps um, my next demo will just be a, a fast. That's the word I'm looking for. Let's get those lines in there. Sped up, whatever. See, I could go on and then lose it too. I could really lose it here. Got to be careful. I think by punching up some areas and by also varying the um, the texture of the paint a little bit, are you seeing that? By creating some globs and some accidents, I think I might have started something that I feel good about. I really want it. <laughs> I want it to be magically dry. And you say, why don't we paint in acrylic? Well, I have my reasons. It dries too dang fast for one. Number two, I just think oil is tends to be more beautiful, but that might just be my bias. Um, but I can see some really gorgeous potential situations that could come out of this if I if it was dry and I was just working on it some more. Um, I can also see places like like right here, where just because I feel like it, some gloppy yellow paint might be fun. I think um, the difference between those little ridgy lines and then those glops, it's just something I felt like doing right there. You also can, stuff like that can just get overkill really quickly. If you start to make little cutesy doodlies everywhere, um, it can just really lose its charm quickly too. So so there's a there's always a benefit to to extending, whoops, that's dirty. There's always a benefit to extending um, simplicity sometimes or to like recognize when maybe things are starting to go south and you should just walk away for a little bit, let it dry and come back. I mean, what has this been, like 30 minutes? Not very long. You can get a lot out of a short session. I think I remember that uh, this top had this like brown edge it might be interesting to bring that back but i'm not sure or at least let the top edge have a different coloration than, than the other top edge and uh i like this idea of like skies kind of coming into her body so maybe as a last little a last little tribute to something great maybe i'll take this blue oh hey i know Get out some black. Now you guys get to use black. Remember how I didn't let you use it? Well, you're allowed now. Just don't mix it as your shadow color because we know that that is about as boring as it gets. So I've got some ultramarine blue 
and some chromatic black. You can use almost any black pigment, just straight black. And I'm gonna, just this place where her skirt's already so dark against that hot orange, I'm feeling this. This desire to bring that black in really strong of her skirt. Just take it from dark green all the way to like this pitch dark black. Oh, I can tell I'm gonna have to bring more of that pink sparkle in or the pink, what was it, pink, uh, pink stars. <laughs> Not to be confused with Lucky Charms, yellow moons. Blue hearts, or whatever the heck that was. Okay. I like that dark. And since I happen to have this pink brush still here, I can probably, I can probably, oops. <laughs> did you see what I did to my medium? What a mess. I get too excited, then I ruin things. Just like a painter. Oh, there we go. Got that pink everywhere. If you get in too many places in a situation like this, let it dry or fix it right then. Like if you don't like that glove, I don't like that one glove. Fixing it and I'm gonna wipe it off. It was just a little much, you know, just a little much. Actually, I feel like the pink, like just pink, might be a little much um, with all of this. I think, I think, uh, I've got some of you guys with your blues and pinks in your palettes are, are uh, affecting me. Then again, I also, those are colors I love too. So maybe we're all affecting each other, right? Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll make a little blue, a little blue one. Try some blue stars. Oh, it's not wet enough. These are going to look white, I have a feeling. Let's make them a little more blue. All right. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> and I hope I'm not going overkill now. All right, probably overkill. Total overkill. But <clears throat> had to put my money where my mouth is, had to make a mistake. How do you recover from feeling like you've overdone it? Take it down a little bit. Come back in and get some of that out. Luckily, those are really watery, thin speckles. So they're not really polluting this heavy, thick yellow paint I'd laid in here before, which is so nice. I can kind of, I can kind of remove them. It's already helping everything relax. With this yellow on my brush, I feel dangerous, but here I, here I go. Oof, yes. Okay, that is so cool. See, it's really good. It's really good to have, to make, to make mistakes. I needed that. Did not see that coming, you guys. At all. Maybe also it occurs to me as I'm sitting here talking about how excited I am about this, that maybe I'm just like, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe I'm just like too excited about my own thing. Maybe you aren't seeing this. Maybe it's not that great. That's part of the, the wonder. Like you're like working along and you're like, I'm a genius. You come back the next day and you're like, uh, what, what was I thinking? Uh, not a genius, <laughs> but <laughs> If at the time you feel genius-like, just enjoy it. Okay, so looking at this, you can see there's some thickness. There's lots of stuff. Um, she's glowing, just like when somebody stands in front of a sunset, right? And they're sort of surrounded by light. I mean, if that was the case, wouldn't it be lighter around her pink head and wouldn't her head be silhouetted? Well, maybe, but that could lead to realism and we're trying to dodge some of that this time around so let's not go too crazy shall we we're picking and choosing what we want from the real world taking it into this painting world 
Okay. Her head looks too much like a pink light bulb, you guys. It's driving me nuts. By the way, did you know that in New Hampshire, growing up, you guys is analogous to y'all? Well, <clears throat> I've been made fun of for saying it, but what if her head just doesn't have as much solidity as a shape? What if it could have hair going out farther than that one light bulb shape, deviating from the original collage? Heads disappearing into this yellow. I have ideas for how to kind of bring it back, maybe with some pure white. Wonder if I should do that now. Or if I should stop the video. I'm gonna dirty another brush. See, I can't stop. Won't stop. Maybe if I just do a little tiny bit more. Yeah, let's get some, um, it's like one of those like Star Wars, you know, Princess Leia and what's the other princess? Somebody tell me what it is next time. You know that hairdo, like a, those little earmuff things. Yes. I can't remember the name. All I know is Princess Leia. If you're familiar with my paintings, you might know that that's this earmuff hair thing is a motif I've done before. It's very subtle right now. <clears throat> Wonder if I should unsettle it up or just stop while I'm ahead. If this was real time, you guys could tell me, but. Oh, and by the way, no, I'm not used to painting while talking. Now it looks like ears. Tell me it doesn't look like ears. Hey, what about this? What about I just stop? Yeah, <clears throat> so different, different velocities, different thicknesses, and different vibes. One last different thing. I said I was gonna stop, but I just decided I wanted a different color because I was saying different so much. So I got this Gamblin transparent orange. I'm gonna use this dirty pink brush to make it a little less transparent. Maybe add a little yellow to make it even less transparent. Let's just introduce a completely new color into just a couple spots. This just needed to come to life in my view. doesn't really change things up that much. I guess because I had so much hot color in there before. It may not be that revolutionary. It may be just a small embellishment. But I'm kind of John, I'm kind of stoked about it actually. It looks a little like fire to me. Just a couple of fiery veins. I think it got a little too heavy on the top. I just I just literally squeezed yellow paint onto my brush. I just felt like that was too orange up there. Yeah, that's more like it. Okay. I think I'm hoping this shows you some of the fearlessness that that I'd like for you to just consider and you actually what am I saying you all did a lot of this with your abstract pieces and and just like your abstract paintings or any other project you still have the original you know the original form is still there it's just you're just going back and you're messing with it you're you're trying to like make the painting have its own different life if you go too far, you end up with um, 
things that look too obvious, like that yellow started to look too obvious around the edges. Her hair like started looking too much like a, like a model. Every time I say I'm gonna stop, I don't. Why? Because that's how I work. That is how I work. So, And there you have the silence. I just need a little bit of silence just to wrap up what I think I'm doing here. In case you didn't notice, when things got muddy, I started using thicker paint right out of the tube. It's a classic method of finishing a painting. It's a really cool way to to make it so it's like really hard to work on the painting um, easily for a while. Okay, did you see what just happened there? What happened is I'm really stopping now. She went from being a quiet, quasi-Victorian looking figure to being a totally strange person with fire falling from the sky onto their head and across this surreal, dystopic, terrifying world. And honestly, I don't know, man. Do I dare? Yes. There's that prompt. Here we go. One more thing. I keep saying that. All right. I just went crazy. Look at all that white paint. Really, really wish I had a bigger brush right in front of me. Don't. Yeah. This will ensure, with this straight white paint out of the tube, this ensures that oh lady painting cannot be touched for like weeks. But seeing as the crits tomorrow, right? Gotta finish at some point. Have you ever painted a painting with thick gloss? And everybody's like, ooh, I love the paint texture. Be careful of the seduction of texture. Never use it just for the sake of it, but dang. How's that for a finish? Maybe you need some mood music to get you in the mood for this. Maybe if you were named after Trent Reznor, like Trent, you could play some Nine Inch Nails, or maybe you hate the Nine Inch Nails and you want to play something else, I don't know. Um, for anybody on YouTube watching this, that was specifically for my class. Inside joke. Okay. Before I question every move I've made, I'm going to genuinely stop now. I just wanted to show you guys the texture. Oh, gosh. Yeah, much better. I keep messing with her head. 
careful, I'm gonna pull out the back of my brush. How many times am I gonna say I stopped and then not stop? Don't make it into a game, because you'll probably win. Okay, it's a lot of push-pull there. I wanted her head to be sort of back to just being there. Okay, I've got a big mess on my hands, y'all. Time to, time to wipe it up. Remember, <clears throat> something like this, you might wanna walk away, but I like to just wipe the excess paint onto my rag before I put these in here. I am gonna walk away for a while. These are oils, they can sit out open for a while. I'm gonna walk away and I'm actually going to take this clip on lamp of mine and I'm gonna put it closer, but I don't wanna catch it on fire. So I'm just gonna um, put that right here. Um, it's a studio lamp, like the kind you can get at the hardware store, except this is on the stand. So I'm gonna use this. Remember the medium does dry faster, so you gotta close it. Getting this tilted up, getting the lamp closer. No fire, no fire. Let's put it about 10 inches away, 12 inches away. It's a warm light. Make sure it's very stable and come check on it before bed. This was a long demo. I'm gonna stop the video. Hope it doesn't take forever to upload. I will see you tomorrow morning.